Okay, so today will probably be our last day kind of practicing predicting because obviously we have a lab tomorrow. Uh, and then on Friday, you're going to get an assignment that you'll be handing in four marks that's on all things reactions. That is writing them out in words, uh, you know, telling me the type and writing it out in equation form and having it balanced and predicting the products and having it balanced. Okay, all of that stuff that's going to be, uh, you're going to work on that all through class on Friday uh, and then hand it in uh, the next week because I want to get that and your reactions lab back to you before your unit exam so that you can use them as part of your studying materials for that unit exam, all right? Uh, I'm also going to post the review um, package tomorrow, okay? I just didn't get quite finished it today, so it'll be posted tomorrow. That's something you probably want to look at over the weekend as well. Okay. All right, uh, just quick review here, guys, okay? Predicting the products of a chemical reaction. First step in predicting the products is that we have to write out the reactants. What's the second step? Once I see the reactants, then I should be able to figure out. Uh, not even so much the charges. Like, let's say I've already done the drop and swap. But before I balance, I've only got the reactants. So I've written out the reactants. If I'm going to predict the products, I need to know right, what kind of reaction it is, whether it's a single replacement, double replacement, combustion, okay, what have you. Right? I've got to be able to figure out what kind of reaction it is. And then I know the pattern I have to follow to figure out what the products would be. If it's a single replacement, then I switch the things that are alike. If it's a double replacement, I swap the metals. If it's combustion, I write CO2 and water, okay, et cetera, et cetera. So I've got to be able to figure out the reaction type and then come up with my products. Once I have my products, I need to drop and swap any ionic compounds check for special elements that need twos or fours or eights on them, okay? Um, and then balance the whole reaction after that. Okay, is that ringing a bell for everybody? Okay, we've got to be able to do those kinds of questions fairly proficiently and fairly efficiently, that is fairly quickly, right? So that we're not spending too much time on one single question on a unit exam or something like that, all right? So let's have a look at uh, the first one here. So it says identify the reaction type, balance, and write each one in words. All right, so these first ones here, you don't have to predict them. They already have the products written out. Okay, all we have to do is write it out in words. So uh, what would this first stuff be? Copper something, yeah. Copper, okay. I'm missing something from that name. Copper 2 fluoride, right, okay. Copper has more than one possible charge, therefore the name would require Roman numerals. Guys, it's those little details that make the difference between getting 2 out of 4 on a question and 4 out of 4 on a question, okay. All right, so I've got copper 2 fluoride. I'm reacting that with sodium, okay, and that's going to produce sodium fluoride. And copper. Do I need the Roman numeral on copper when it's an element? No, because elements don't have charges. All right, I only need a Roman numeral on a metal if it has more than one charge and it's in a compound with something else. All right, what kind of reaction is that? Single replacement, okay. And in order to balance it, I should start with fluorine. There's two here, so I would need to put a two there. That would give me two sodiums, so I have to go back over here and make sure I have two sodiums, one copper, one copper. Looks like everything is balanced now. Okay. Try to get down up to number eight, okay, and then we'll go over them together. Let's say in like the next 12 minutes or so. Okay. All right, let's just walk through two and three here. All right, so on number two, okay, I have beryllium reacting with phosphorus. Okay, and that is going to produce beryllium phosphide. Okay, notice there's no capital letters in that. Make sure yours don't have any capital letters either. Okay. All right, what kind of reaction is that? Two elements reacting to form a compound. 
synthesis reaction. All right, what should I balance first? I should balance phosphorus, present in the largest number. Okay, I'm going to need a 2 here to give me 4 phosphorus like I have on this side, and that's going to give me 6 beryllium. So a 6 there will make that work. Questions on that one? Okay. All right, for our third one here, okay, we have carbon and chlorine. Is that a molecular or ionic compound? That's molecular, so I'm going to need prefixes. This stuff is carbon tetrachloride. And it's breaking down into carbon and chlorine. Do I need a prefix on chlorine when it looks like this? No, this is its element form, so I just write its name as its element name. All right, uh, so since it's breaking down, we're looking at a decomp reaction. And in order to make this balance, I need to put a two right here. So I've got four chlorines on both sides. Okay, I'll give you a little bit of time to get ahead of me again. Yeah, let's look at uh, four and five here. Okay, so for number four, I've got hydrogen with bromine. That's an ionic compound. So that's going to be hydrogen bromide. Okay, that's going to react with barium sulfide, also an ionic compound. And that's going to produce hydrogen sulfide ionic compound and barium bromide. <clears throat> All right, since they're all ionic, that's a double replacement reaction. And if I'm going to go back and balance, um, looks like I'm only going to need one number. If I start with hydrogen or bromine, okay, I'm going to end up with a two there, and everything else is going to be balanced. Okay. Uh, for number five here, um, we've got iron and oxygen. Does iron have more than one possible charge? Okay, then I got to figure out which iron this is. Okay, so um, oxygen is a minus two, which and there's three of them, so that gives me a total of six negative charges. Um, I have to get six positives out of these two irons, so this is iron three. Okay, so we got iron, Roman numeral three, oxide, and it's reacting with silver, and that's going to produce silver oxide. Silver doesn't need a Roman numeral because it only has one charge. And that's going to leave iron by itself, which doesn't need a Roman numeral when it's in its element form. All right. Uh, what kind of reaction is this? Single replacement. Okay. Um, I would say probably best to start with our um, silver, probably. Okay. Put a two here. That'll make our silver work. Nope. Sorry. Don't want to start with silver. Start with oxygen. Okay, there's three oxygens on this side. I need to put a three here to make my oxygens work. That'll give me six silver, so that'll make the silver work. And then there's two iron on the reactant side, two iron on the product side. That should do it. Okay, now I want to have a look here quickly, guys, at these ones at the bottom. Okay, because uh, you'll probably get to those. Um, so we're given the reaction here in word form. We need to identify it and write it out in formula form. So you got to do your drop and swap and remember your special elements and things like that. So we have magnesium reacting with nitrogen gas, okay, which is a special element, producing magnesium nitride, so Mg with N. That's an ionic compound, so I've got to drop and swap. So we'll have Mg3N2. Okay, magnesium's not special, so it doesn't need a, um, a small uh, number beside it. Now I got to go back and balance everything. Looks like just a three here will make that work. All right, what kind of reaction is that? Two, two elements reacting to form a compound, synthesis reaction. All right, 